right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Seattle Pandemonium Shutdown, day 90. Um, yeah, I'm calling it Pandemonium because it is Pandemonium out there. Um, so what's going on today? So we're going to take 99 South again because I did it a couple of, a couple of months ago and uh, it was barren and clearly traffic is returning to something like normal. Now, the traffic comparison thing is a later project. I'm gonna have to do the legwork and actually, or the hand with the mouse work, to do the editing and do some side-by-sides to show the time, you know, show the difference. And I don't know what that's really for, just documenting a retrospective of the pandemic. Now, is the pandemic over? or is at least the media cycle around the pandemic over and therefore in public consciousness it's just over. I very much believe that's possible. Um, we will be reminded of it, especially if we have large spikes after all these people went out and uh, protested together. So, the protests. Now, this is something that I'm, I'm it, it's really tiresome to have to do but there is a continuous verbal shell game thing that the media does, the pundits do it. All right, I'll let you in, bro. Come on. Are you coming in? Um, and they, they've been doing this, they do this for years, and people get mad because the verbal shell game is, like, confusing them. So, like, the illegal immigrants thing. People conflate immigrant with illegal immigrant and then talk about how Donald Trump hates immigrants even though he's married to one and then they go aha he's a hypocrite and it's like uh, you know silence supports the oppression okay black lives matter um, they, they and they do this in the media like in uh, you know newspapers New York Times does this a lot and it's a verbal shell game because you're like, that's not what is happening here. You're conflating different words and then, and then confusing people. So, uh, protesters. So they're calling everybody out in the streets right now a protester. Now, some of them are protesters and some of them are rioters and some of those rioters are looters. So what starts maybe as prote uh, someone protesting becomes a riot and then becomes looting, and some subset of the very first group of protesters become rioters and then become looters. Now, some of them, I assume, set out with the intention to loot in the first place. Some of them get caught up in a riot and get, get grabby because human nature. And some of them are literally on video trying to stop the second sub, sub, uh, subsets of the, of the demonstrations, demonstrators from doing those things. They are taking weapons from people. They're taking bricks from people. Um, and scolding them. Uh, turning them into the police in some cases. Um, which is a form of self-policing, I suppose. It's good. I guess there hasn't, there clearly hasn't been enough of that. But it is something that, um, you have to use the right words because if you say they're calling in the civil, uh, or the the uh, national guard to end the to end the rioting, well then that means the national guard is targeting protesters. No, they're targeting rioters, and rioting is not protected speech because you're damaging other people's possessions. Now you can argue the ethic, the ethics and efficacy of rioting as a form of protest. It has been done many times in the past. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I know enough to say whether rioting is effective as a form of social outrage or not. Like, I don't know, did it help LA to have that giant, you know, giant freak out back in the 90s? Did that help things? Did that make it worse? Did it not change at all? I mean, the city still has a lot of the same problems. I, I mean, so the rioting, not good. Looting, taking other people's stuff. Well, you know, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna, you're, that's basically living by the sword, by the way. If you're gonna go and go, I'm gonna break into your store, I'm gonna take your stuff, I'm gonna burn it down, maybe. 
I'm going to steal your livelihood from you? Well then, well I'm sorry, but fuck you. And clearly, because nearly two million guns were purchased in May and almost 80% of them were first time gun buyers, a whole bunch of people just got a giant dose of red pill. Like, oh boy, did a whole bunch of people go, oh my god, I am not protected. I am not safe. I am going to purchase a firearm. Which, once again, anyone who has panic bought a firearm in the last couple of months, please, please, please do your due diligence and go study up on your specific purchase, okay? I cannot stress this enough. Learn how to disassemble it, reassemble it, handle it, store it, practice trigger discipline, ammunition discipline, watch every video you can of other people showing you tips and tricks and what to do and not do, basics of firearm safety, all that stuff. Review it over and over again, okay? Because you got a lot of catching up to do and there's gonna be a whole bunch of panicky peeps out there not knowing how to turn the safety on or off their gun, okay? So I need you to do your homework if you're gonna join us in the endeavor of the Second Amendment <laughs> resurgence, okay? Welcome to the party. So, that being said, don't go loot people's stuff. I'm just, like, it's a good way to get shot, and people have been shot. We don't even know what the body count is yet. But if you don't do that, you won't get shot. That's kind of the idea, right? And in places like New York City, which I've kind of covered this already, New York City has really strict gun laws, so a lot of you know store owners wouldn't be able to defend their stores with guns and would probably be dissuaded by other laws like castle doctrine and stuff. Um, and like parts of Fifth Avenue in Manhattan were just completely ransacked, whereas other parts untouched. And so this is, you know, this is, this is where we're at. Everybody learned a valuable lesson. So, um, where was I going? Verbal shell games, though. So yeah, protesters, rioters, and looters. Now, here in Seattle, rioting is like a sport. I mean, it's like a, it's like a pastime here. Uh, so this city handled our riots better, and we had some looting. We did have some, just some looting of, you know, electronic stores and stuff like that. But uh, the protests that, again, there's gonna be one tonight at, like, Cal Anderson, have gotten a little wild in the sense that tear gas is deployed, flashbangs are deployed, people get arrested, people kind of get knocked around, but it's been, it's been, that's kind of par for the course. That's kind of usually how these things go. And they, if they do the same thing tonight and a big number of people get together, the police use the same sort of tactics over and over, crowd control tactics, and keep people from going completely buck wild. Like, I'm not exactly sure what the strategy is here on the part of both the protesters and the police. And this applies to, like, the protests at the White House, for example. Like, why are people going to the White House to be outraged about something that the Minnesota Police Department did? Or it's all the police departments. So then at a federal level, that then is the executive branch, so therefore it's Trump's fault. But then Obama was in office for eight years and we didn't fix any of this stuff. Like, I'm just kind of confused as to what everyone's expecting to happen. And, and the specific sort of tactics being used as well. Like, who's doing, like, you show up to the police barrack, the police make a barricade somewhere arbitrarily, I guess. And then you show up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, traffic is basically back to normal. Uh, you show up at the barricade, at which point they're going to push you back from the barricade, at which point a bunch of people crowd in together, at which point one person throws something, at which point tear gas is deployed. And then you run away, and then they kind of come after you, and then you go back into the barricade. Like, I'm kind of confused as to what this is supposed to do. It seems like it's just exhausting the shit out of everybody and making everybody, like, cranky. Let me in, bro. Thank you. you gotta know some tips and tricks for getting around Seattle in any, any kind of timely fashion. So anyways, yes, protesters, rioters, and looters, uh... When the looting starts, the shooting starts, is what the president said. Uh, 
I, I people were mad about that, I guess, and Twitter censored it because it's it's a threat. It's it's not a threat. It's a warning, really, and it's completely factually accurate. Go, you're on the right. Come on. It's completely factually accurate as far as I'm, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah, if you start looting, people will start shooting, and then they'll shoot. People will shoot at them. I don't know. It's a it's a downward spiral. But is can everybody calm down? Like, I understand activists will say no because no justice, no peace. But like, guys, we're look at what we're doing here. Like. When I step back and I look at this stuff, you look at what's happening. We look at what's coming. I I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Like we might be looking at a future where, you know, never mind Black Lives Matter or any lives mattering. Like we might be looking at a world where lives really don't matter that much of any kind. I don't know what that even means really. But if we're headed into a Great Depression, guys, I mean. We don't really know what that's going to look like, and we're going to look back and go, oh yeah, this is when it started. This is when it started, and it didn't stop, because we're all pumped up on rhetoric, and we're all losing our minds, and we're all suffering tremendous amounts of anxiety, I assume, and we are really, we're really in it. We're, we're in something right now that can, I, like, it can become a lot better, or it can become a lot worse. And I'm not getting a lot of good vibes out of this. I'm not getting a lot of positive vibes. There have been some moments, police and protesters getting along, uh, but there's been some bad moments, police sort of arbitrarily arresting people. Like, I'm not quite, not quite sure, like, you know, how many lawsuits are going to come out of this, right? Like, you're just people suing cities, people suing police departments, Supreme Court cases, I don't know. It's just going to be a giant mess, but there's people who've been arrested for what appears to be completely innocuous stuff that is not really, doesn't seem legal anyway. Um, yeah, so there's been some brief moments that are good, some moments that are bad. There's been a lot of trauma all over the damn country, though, but I can't, well, okay, I can't really say all over the country because my joke, which is, again, a bit glib, but Democrats apparently are bad at policing Democrats because this is mostly happening in large urban centers. Now, it has happened in other places, that's to be fair, but the majority of the complete chaos is happening in the major cities, which are Democrat-run for the most part and uh, have these large minority populations that have these encounters with law enforcement that lead to their deaths which leads to Black Lives Matter, and here we are. And that's, so that's Democrat-run city policies. So, there you go. I mean, it's a bit glib, it's a little more complicated than that, but, like, that's kind of what hap is what's happening. So, really, Democrats are mad at other Democrats. This isn't a liberal conservative thing, right? The conservatives already had their guns, and they're, you know, <laughs> and, they, and they already moved out of the city. Uh, something like that. The, uh, yeah, so the, the reality of what we're headed into, again, like, maybe it will be fine, maybe everything will just kind of heal and recover, and we'll, we'll all make it, but man, you know, billions of dollars is not coming into Seattle this, uh, this year, this summer, you know, well, for the whole year. Uh, cruise ships aren't coming. The conventions aren't coming. All this revenue for the city, for all the local businesses, and then all the wages paid out to all those employees. And I get a pit in my stomach thinking about it. Because like I talked about yesterday, capital flight. If you just, you know, why, why, why would I open my business here when people will just riot and destroy it and the city won't protect me, but I pay taxes. It's, uh... It's, uh... It's really something. It's really something. And, like, again, we don't really know what it looks like. Like, a barren, a barren, a empty, abandoned downtown core in somewhere like New York City? Will it just have enough foot traffic to keep it, to keep it going? Or will it, I mean, can, can it turn into Gotham? I mean, what, 
We don't really know what this looks like in the modern era. I know it got pretty bad back in like the 80s, right? Weren't the, wasn't the, the, the late 70s, early 80s it was a bad economy? Um, abandoned buildings, right? Like, just standing empty because there's nothing you can, there's nothing you can do. Oh, God. You can go across the, oh, come on. Come on, guys. I love how we, we waited until now to start doing what looks like road construction. Good work. Good work, everyone. I mean, why couldn't we have started paving all the roads during all this stuff? Right? Put the road crews to work. Ugh. Anyways. I don't know. That might be all for me for today, except bitching about traffic. But I'm, uh... Again, I'm cautious. I was cautiously optimistic about the pandemic. Okay, uh, I was I was feeling like that was kind of passing, and we were gonna kind of be okay. It wasn't gonna be as bad as we thought, at least in terms of body count. But the economy was frightening. The economics of this thing are just frightening. And now we have this. We have civil unrest. Is you know really the kind of umbrella term for it, and. I've seen some great Venn diagrams about this. It's like, uh, George Floyd shouldn't have been killed by the police. But you can't just charge police with murder. But in this case, it might have been murder of some kind, of some degree. Uh, police need better training, but there can also be racist police. Right? So, like, all these different factors can be true while at the same time that doesn't give you the right to go burn everything down. And the less, the take, I don't, I don't know if the lesson taken from all of this is actually gonna come across because you have white people who are sympathetic to Black Lives Matter and then you have people who are kind of on the all lives matter rhetoric and the two rhetorics are just never, they're just, they're kind of incompatible, you know? So, Can we, it's like, can you, can you crack that nut? Can we, can we come to a loggerhead? I don't even know what a loggerhead actually is, but it's a thing people say. Can we come to terms with this? Um, because the country, America does run on hypocrisy. I mean, we, we're, we have hypocrisy baked into our DNA. So are we after destroying everything and getting super mad at each other? Are we actually gonna like kiss and make up somehow? Or is it just gonna sit and fester? Is it just gonna fester? See, there goes some people probably protesting. See, it's hard to tell because now everybody's wearing masks. <laughs> uh, how do you heal America? Especially after this, like how do we come back? Come back and go back to work and not assume that, you know, uh, your white co-workers don't think black lives matter and your white co-worker understanding that all lives matter is missing the point and like we we come together I don't know I don't know if we're capable of it I mean certain people aren't going to be capable of it they're not going to allow for any kind of de-escalation because, well, they're, like, they're activists and stuff. And if you're an activist and you solve the problem you're acting against, well, now you don't have that task anymore. So now you have to go do something else. So it seems as though there are institutions that exist just to continuously act against whatever so that there's always something for them to do. Now, it's up to us as people to decide and prioritize what we think we need to do as a society and what we need to do as individuals. And Democrats and Republicans are very likely not going to help us with that problem. I'm not sure exactly what I mean by that, but I just don't, ex don't look to them for help is I guess what I'm saying. They don't know anymore, they don't know what's going on anymore than we do, and they love to pander. So they're gonna pander. They'll fall for it. Anyways, well, that's enough rambling from me. We're on day 90, 90 of complete chaos, and I'm, I'm tired. 
<laughs> All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.